going to present on the Galamsey menace here in Ghana. And if you can see my screen, you could see a lot of things you're not used to. At the top right corner, you see forests, right? And here you see some something like brownish color. We'll go into that shortly. So this is going to be my outline, definition and background, some causes, environmental impacts, and then a case study of two rivers here in Ghana that have been contaminated by the Galamse menace. And then some solutions and recommendations. To start with, um, when we say Galamse, it's, it's a term here in Ghana, which means gather them and sell. Gather them and sell. And it's, it's small-scale mining. It's illegal. Despite its illegalities, major mining companies who have license also um, have some form of greenwashing. They pretend, they prove to the public that they are doing things eco-friendly or climate-friendly, but they also have some dubious things going on in their various companies. So this Galamsey started um, um, somewhere in the 1980s due to economic hardship, you know, here in Ghana and poverty as the main drive, yes, and has been spreading since. And it attracts both locals and foreigners alike, yes. And they use primitive tools like the hoe, the axe. They, they have so many tools they use, but they, most of them are primitive. However, they have other um, sophisticated ma uh, machines like the excavators. And we'll go, we'll go into that shortly. So it became a major problem um, when it started, um, we started seeing impacts, clear impacts of our water bodies changing color and all that. That's when we started um, putting more pressure to stop this menace. Now, what causes Galamse? As I said, it started because of economic problems, you know. Uh, here in Ghana, the minimum um, wage here is 18 Ghana cities, 15 pesos, which is $1.14. While illegal miners, illegal miners, they end between $2.9 and then $22.9 daily. So when you compare it to the minimum wage, the minimum wage here, you can see that the vast difference. That's why a lot of people go into this um, illegal mining because they get quick money. There are also political factors, you know, um, weak law enforcement and corruption. Government tries to um, curb the situation, but it's proven futile because most of the people in power are also involved indirectly. They are involved. Some are involved directly and some are involved indirectly. As I said, they use primitive tools, but they also have excavators. So one time, journalists went to these mining sites, right? And then they were interviewing them. One of them said, if you look at my present condition, do you think I can afford excavators? That means there are people in power who also finance these small-scale miners, illegal small-scale miners. And um, there was one time um, the gap president himself established an inter-ministerial inter, uh, committee to fight this problem. So they deployed the military and the police to go to one of the sites. And when they went there, they saw military uniforms in a shed. And from their investigations, they realized some military men were protecting illegal miners. And when the military men came, they destroyed some of the journalists' um, cameras and their vehicles, and they broke their tail lights and all that. And they told them they had an order from above to protect these people. So usually there's a term in Ghana called order from above, but we don't know who is above ordering people. Okay. And then there's also social... Um, Causes, you know, the communities where these illegal mining takes place, they have their source of income from these illegal miners because they mine in the forests. So people in the community travel all the way to the forest to sell water, food, and all that to these illegal miners. And they are able to get more money. They get a lot of money from these miners because they, they, they have a lot of money on them. So now you have some environmental impacts, you know. The main thing is deforestation or biodiversity loss. So you can see from the top left corner, you know, that's one of the forest reserves we have here in Ghana. You know, 
And due to this large scale, small scale mining, you could see how it's turned into. So large scale clearing of the forest leading to deforestation and loss of biodiversity. And it says within five years, illegal miners degraded 2.5 kilometers square of the often shelter belt reserve within five years. This is only one of the reserves. Now, when it comes to water pollution, you know, uh, whatever is done upstream will definitely come downstream. So most of these communities affected by this illegal miners uh, activities are not in the communities themselves. So the communities, the mining takes place upstream somewhere and then um, other people face their repercussions. So now you see the, they use mercury, cyanide, lead, and other harmful chemicals to, to um, get their, their minerals, the gold, the bauxite, whatever they are looking for. And now they are turning all our water bodies into this, I don't know whether chocolate-like, this cream, this undesired color here, you know. So water pollution, mercury and cyanide, which is used to wash the materials that polluted all the water bodies around. Now, air pollution too. They kind of sift some of the dust to get the minerals. So you can see what the gentleman is doing on the top right corner. You know, and all these sustainable development goal 11, sustainable cities and communities, you know, this does not um, lead to that. Now, water pollution, more on the water pollution, you know, it says water pollution from Galamse is causing chronic diseases and Ghana could be importing water by 2030. Ghana could be importing water by 2030 because of these activities. So when you look at the picture down here, that is a water treatment site the president went to visit. And now you can see the color of the water. So they are not able to treat water well for us. And I, I can attest to the fact that now we have some kind of, um, we don't get access to potable water daily. You know, it comes on and off. So on the right hand side, you can see um, a letter from the Ghana Water Company. And the heading is, water, water supply challenges emanating from illegal mining activities. So they are not able to produce the number of gallons per day as they used to because of illegal mining. And, you know, um, in the communities, most especially where these illegal mining takes place, they are experiencing kidney failure, is becoming rampant, and then birth defects recorded in the mining areas. Some people do not have ears, some do not have legs, some, so many defects. You know, I don't know if you know of the Bhopal disaster in 1984 in India, Union Carbide. So um, there was a Bhopal, Bhopal disaster in 1984 in India, Union Carbide, some explosions and all that. And years after, people are still giving birth with um, many defects, you know, some do not have arms and all that. And that's what's happening in some of the mining communities. Kidney failures, some have, do not have body parts when they are giving birth to. And now water scarcity, as I said, I attest to the fact that even here in Accra, the capital of Ghana, where mining does not take place, we are experiencing the repercussions of these mining, illegal mining activities. You know, um, uh, there is no substitute for water. When you don't want cook, you can get Pepsi. When you don't want potato, you can get yam or plantain. But for water, there's no substitute for water. So I, I was on a project with a, a Chinese Canadian and she was telling me in China, some people import fresh air as a luxury. I found it difficult to believe, but she told me some people import fresh air as a luxury good, you know, because of air pollution. So some people import fresh air into China. So Ghana is estimated that by 2030, we'll be importing water. Most of these areas are farming areas, you know, and people are turning their farmlands into um, mining pits where people destroy the land. So it says over 100,000 acres of cocoa farm land has been destroyed in one area alone, 100,000 acres. Another one, seven out of 16 regions have been affected by illegal mining, says the head of Forestry Commission here in Ghana. And then 34 out of the 288 forest reserves we have here has been affected by uh, and destroyed. And the area of land is estimated to be 4,726 hectares, which is larger than cities like Athens or Brussels. So you can see the impacts of this illegal mining. 
Now we are going to look at okay, so um sustainable development goal two, you know, end hunger and all that. Food must be nutritious, it must be available. But nowadays, food is not nutritious in those areas because um, there are fine traces of mercury, cyanide, and lead in food food products here in some of the um, uh, mining areas. So sustainability. Now, we are trying to think about thrivability, flourishing, but we are not even sustainable. How much more thriving? <laughs> now, there's a case study, you know, um, uh, this, the river Pra. That's not how it used to be. It used to be clean, but now look at the estate. So um, it flows through rich cocoa and farming areas, but now people are turning their cocoa farms into Galamsey sites. So Ghana now has decreased cocoa production by 55% because of illegal mining. And listen to the alarming part. This river enters the Gulf of Guinea through the Western region. It enters the Gulf of Guinea. I have a video to share later on. It is heavily polluted due to illegal mining and the communities that rely on the river for water suffer and are often displaced. So people who used to farm and are not, not getting the produce they used to get are helpless. So they have to be displaced, moved to other areas. Now with this river and Cobra, I went there in 2022. So I have a footage of river and Cobra. That's how it, it used to be years ago this is how it used to be river and cobra it's in the western region and now shockingly this is it so on the there's an estuary um on on the right you could see the estuary where the river enters the sea and you could see the sea has been polluted too on the right hand picture you could see the sea is now turning brown or whichever color you see, the sea is turning brown on the right, you can see, so it's changing. And it's really disturbing. Our, you see the picture on my left, on, your, on our left, there's a fish down there. You can see people standing, you can see shoes there. I'll explain this picture in my video. And people fish from the, the sea and the river that has been polluted and they sell to other people to consume. And that is not good for our health at all. All these fishes are, are been polluted with mercury and all that. So I'll talk about the picture on my left later. I want us to watch this video. That is the sea for you, the sea. That is the sea. That is the extent to which this illegal mine has contaminated the sea. The sea should take the form of the sky. But now the sea, look at the color of the sea now. So back to this picture on my left, the, the fish on the seashore. This fish was caught by the guys who were swimming in the sea with their bare hands. The fish was caught by the guys, one guy with his bare hands. And um, it could be that the fish didn't know where it was going because the, 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 the sea is now not clear for the fish to move. So the fish was just wandering somewhere. And the guy, the guy was also swimming and he just caught the fish. So this fish here is going to be sold to someone elsewhere, but it's been polluted with mercury, lead, cyanide, and all the poisonous chemicals they use in um, um, finding gold and bauxite and all that. Now, what's worrying? You know, calculations conducted by the um, uh, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research here in Ghana, a doctor by name Dr. Albert Mensa. He's a soil scientist. He did a research using phytoremediation techniques. You know, um, it's uh, it's a natural way of uh, rec um, soil recovery. You know, the quality of the soil. And he says it's going to take Ghana over 300 years to restore quality of the soil, over 300 years to restore the quality of the soil. And th this means we've, 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 put, we've put the future of this nation into jeopardy for three centuries. You know, we'll not be having quality um, soil and all that to produce quality food. And that, that is not good for us at all. How can we even thrive to flourish? But now 
we are even considering sustainability. And it's sad. And also, to restore the water quality, the destroyed water quality, it should take Ghana from 10 to 15 years, from 10 to 15 years to restore the water quality. That is if they stop illegal mining now. But from what is going on, there's no sign of slowing down because they are continuing with business as usual. So we are extending the 10 to 15 years. Definitely, they are not stopping. You know, with this, I have a lecturer. His name is Professor Christopher Gordon. You can, you can search for him. He says this illegal mining is a mental issue. He says it's a mental issue. That's what he said. It's, it's in the public domain. And then he's 65 years old. So um, sometimes when he's lecturing in class and he thinks about how people are still continuing with business as usual, he just tells us, okay, I'm 65 years old and I'll die very soon. So it is your problem. <laughs> he says he doesn't see, he doesn't see this problem ending now. A lot of researchers are saying they don't see this problem ending now or how we can, we can restore water quality and the soil. So it's, it's a serious problem here in Ghana. It's worrying. Now, these are some solutions or recommendations, but you know, promote legal small-scale mining practices, um, enhancing monitoring and enforcement of mining laws. You know, the government tried its best to um to 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 seize some over hundred hundreds of excavators, but they went missing. They went missing. So you can Google missing excavators in Ghana, missing excavators. They went missing. We didn't know where the excavators went to. So it's it's sad, it's sad, it's sad. Penalties for illegal mining activities. I told you some major mining companies are greenwashing. They are greenwashing. They, 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 they pose themselves to be doing the right things, but behind the scenes. So you wouldn't know who is doing the right thing or not. Alternative livelihoods for affected communities. Now, what I'm suggesting is reclamation and rehabilitation. Reclamation. But now the people are not slowing down. So we don't even know how to reclaim all these sites. It's like government is helpless. The government is helpless because they are the people in power are also involved in it. Community-led reforestation to restore degraded land and promote that biodiversity. Community-led, but the community themselves too are involved because they get a lot of money from it daily. And then this last point, you know, Parliament to revoke a legislative in instrument, LI 2462. That was yesterday. You know, putting up this presentation was a bit difficult because day in, day out, for the past year, day in, day out, we get info from Galamse and everything. So Parliament reconstituted yesterday. That was 15th October. And the, the one agenda was to revoke LI 2462. This LI was, this LI enabled mining in forest reserves under specific conditions. So now because of the alarming rate of deforestation and degradation, they are revoking that ally. So what can we do? The only thing we can do now is to just raise awareness of environmental conservation and, and, and sustainable practices. So that's me in red. I was this is this was on climate change. I was it was a training of trainers program. So we are we are still raising awareness of um, illegal mining and the impacts of, of, of illegal mining. And then that's me to here to, this was in November last year. I went to a senior high school with a team to talk to them about these environmental practices and all that. So we spoke to about 4,000 students. These are some of the presentations we do. We, we talk to them about how our actions today could impact generations tomorrow. And so this is an example of um, one of the sites and the tools they use destroying the water bodies and all that. And most of the activities are done by water bodies. So it just destroys the water bodies. Thank you. And I, I have another video to share before I end. So this is a video I took I took myself when we went to the river and Cobra, where the river meets the sea, the estuary. And you could see a clear difference. So kindly watch it. You could see a clear difference. That's the Pra River. Which is the other side of the river.
So you could see, so watch here, you could see a clear difference. You look here, I'll point at it. You could see the clear difference. The clear difference between the, where the river meets the sea and then the other side of the tributary, the other side, and you could see mangroves around. So this issue is really alarming. And day in, day out, it's moving into the sea. So who knows? It's going to the wet, uh, the other part and it will enter into Cote d'Ivoire. It it, it's, it's continuing. This is, is really serious. It's really serious. These are mangroves. I don't know how healthy these mangroves will be. So this is a video I took. We went to the sites to visit. And... Um, and people fish, look at this. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad. All the organisms there are, 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 are not doing well. You can see they are not doing well. And people, the alarming thing is that people still, let me forward it. People still fish. You can see these guys, they are harvesting some fishes here on the other side of the river, which is not um, fully polluted. You can see they are, they, are, they are looking for shrimps and other, uh, I don't know what fish still lives in there. Okay, so I'll end my presentation. Thank you very much.